Advent blessings to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, a warm welcome to all of you from your past reality. We are now in the second Sunday of Advent. Advent's urgency. Repent. Our readings for today are from Isaiah, the letter to the Romans, and the Gospel of Matthew. Isaiah 11, verse 1 to 10. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance nor make a decision based on hearsay. He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploit. The earth will shake at the force of his word, and one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. In that day the wolf and the lamb will live together, the leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion, and a little child will lead them all. The cow will gaze near to the bear. The cup and the calf will lie down together. The lion will eat hay like a cow. The baby like will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put its hand in a nest of deadly snakes without harm. Nothing will hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. For as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. In that day the heir to David's throne will be a banner of salvation to all the world. The nations will really to uh, rely to him and the land where he lives will be a glorious place in that day the lord will reach out his hand a second time to bring back the remnant of his people those who remain in assyria and northern egypt in southern egypt ethiopia and elam in babylonia hamat and all the distant coastlands. Roman 15, verses 4 to 9. Such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. And the scriptures gives us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently. For God's promises to be fulfilled. May God, who gives this patience and encouragement, help you live in complete harmony with each other, as is fitting for followers of Christ Jesus. Then all of you can join together with one voice, giving praise and glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore accept each other just as God, Christ accepts you, that God will be given glory. Remember that Christ came as a servant to the Jews to show that God is true to the promise he made to their ancestors. He also came so that the Gentiles might be given glory to God for his mercies to them. That is what the psalmist meant when he wrote, For this I will praise you among the Gentiles. I will sing praises to you and your name. Matthew 3 verses 1 to 12 In those days John the Baptist came to Judea, Judean wilderness, and began preaching. His message was, Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. 
The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, He is a voice, voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Prepare the way for the Lord is coming, and clear the road for him. John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food he eat locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from all of Judea and all over the Jordan Valley went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptized, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed, who warned you to flee to coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to serve severe the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I baptize with water and those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater than I'm not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the scriptures for us saying today that John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And our reflection for today is in a poem titled The Halo Effect. The poet Marilyn Chandler McIntyre reflects on revelation, conversion, and epiphany. Her preaching, like John the Baptist, makes the claim that grace of God's light and presence is always present. Our challenge is to be awake and attentive to the kingdom that is at hand. However, a proper disposition is needed to be present to reality. Unless there is some degree of interior change, let's call it repentance or change of mind and heart. We miss so much of life and the workings of grace. Preoccupation with oneself, narcissism, having too many things to do activism, or simply insensitivity lead to a narrow existence. John the Baptist challenged us to wake up, as do all prophets and poets. What is this kingdom of heaven? Isaiah the prophet describes certain attributes that indicate that God's reign is at hand, indeed, present in the here and now. God's rule is manifest in righteousness and fidelity, in those who have wisdom and understanding, in the women and men who have knowledge and fear of the Lord. When peace replaces hostility, when trust drives out anxiety, when hope displaces despair, the kingdom of God is present. By contrast, John Cajun, a Christian monk and theologian, describes the kingdom of the devil as one of unrighteousness and discord, that dealing gloom and lifelessness. When these qualities are present in our individual lives or in our culture, the need for repentance is urgent. Our hope in this Advent season is grounded in St. Paul's reminder that our God is a God of steadfastness and encouragement. In the call to repentance and conversion, God does not want us to become discouraged. Rather, we are to trust that Jesus 
the faithful Son has been given to us. We are not alone in our striving to be faithful to our baptism call. St. Paul would have us rejoice always in the Lord. Our meditation for today is, what are the areas in your life, attitudes, dispositions, and behavior that the Lord is calling you to address in this Advent season? St. Paul tells us that God's kingdom is about righteousness, peace, and joy. In what way are you an instrument of peace and joy to others? Let's pray together. Loving God, as we pray, your kingdom come. Grant us the courage to follow your Son, Jesus, and be a channel of your peace and joy. Enlighten us to see those areas of our life that need transformation. May we feel the urgency of the Baptist message that we repent, for your kingdom is indeed at hand. Amen. Blessings on this second Sunday of our Advent season. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye.